prime example of him considering his choices and determining that my request is far too boring for him to obey. <laughs> <laughs> Arlo, come. <laughs> I think he knows that I'm only joking. See, he's far too smart for his own good. Come on, sweetie. Here, this side. Good boy. Oh, you're a good boy. Hi, everybody. I think this is maybe episode five of my series, uh, The Reality of Living with a Giant Dog in a Relatively Small Space. Uh, today I'll talk about um, Borzoi dogs and their intelligence level and or obedience and how it's related to one another. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy it. Because I'm such an expert YouTuber, I've got about two months worth of videos pre-filmed. So I hope you're enjoying that at the moment. And I don't know how many videos there will be in this series. Keep asking questions and I'll see what I can do to answer them. A definite question that I've been thinking about is more so related to having a borzoi and not necessarily related to having um, a large dog in a small or relatively small apartment. So, many Borzoi owners will say, and in my experience, I agree, that they're actually quite intelligent. However, they're not so obedient. This is definitely what I've found in Arlo's case. I've had a couple of examples recently and um, I'm not able to capture it on a video so I'll just talk about it but uh, in regards to their intelligence um, and their obedience I think I was doing really well in that sense because twice in the past few weeks he's gotten into some kind of unpleasant uh, animal remains <laughs> uh, and I always thought he would just ignore me because previously he's grabbed some things and uh, run around with them in his mouth almost like he's laughing at me <laughs> and every time I try to get close to him he runs around with the thing hanging out of his mouth and he's just doing this happy dance with his tail wagging it's the biggest game for him I always thought that there was nothing I could do about it however I was wrong so the other week Arlo grabbed something that was far too revolting for me to approve um, and anyway what I did is go over to him and tell him to leave it to my amazement he left it he spat it out of his mouth and left it there. He was such a good boy. He did what I asked him to do. Um, we're down in this sort of little area near where there's some nice fresh running water and uh, he's just having a really good sniff 
and explore. He's having so much fun. There is uh, a carcass of a kangaroo. Um, I don't mind him sniffing it. However, he went to grab it earlier and I just went uh uh like that and he dropped it and ran away. I'm actually quite flabbergasted. <laughs> I'm so proud of him. So the thing is because Borzoi were bred to be quite independent thinkers they'd uh, go out in a pack maybe of about, about I don't know three or four dogs um, and they'd separate from the actual hunter uh, they would go and find the prey and uh, pin it down and then they'd wait for the hunter to come along and dispatch it so because this is what they were bred to do they had to be quite independent dogs independent thinkers they're very very unlike a classic working breed dog which are considered to be intelligent and obedient the fact is borzoi dogs are very intelligent the issue is that they're just not that obedient a lot of times they might consider a command or a request from their person and they might think about it and then just decide that it's far too boring and unimportant to them and I've definitely noticed this with Arlo's behavior the fact that he will um, actually go through and complete something that I've asked of him like leave it that's my command to drop whatever he's got in his mouth and he's done that on two occasions just in the past couple of weeks so i'm pretty um i'm pretty happy with that recall on the other hand not so good kind of okay if he knows he's going to have breakfast at the end of it or dinner but if we're out and about like this and I ask him to come, maybe 50% of the time he will actually come. Or if he does, he'll be dragging his feet. <laughs> he'll eventually come when I call him. Just might take him a really long time. Wait. Good oh boy. boy okay a sad abandoned golf ball <laughs> <laughs> another thing I've managed to train Arlo to do is unwrap himself from a tree or a pole or something when he's on the long leash so if I'm walking along the footpath and he's on this leash uh, this um, extends to eight meters he might go to the opposite side of a tree and have a sniff so I don't want to then cross over to that side of the tree to untangle the leash because that might be inconvenient for me what if I'm um, in my work clothes in the morning and I can't go through the wet grass or I just don't want to it and what if it's late at night and I can't see um, where I'm walking I could fall over so I've managed to ask Arlo to come this side and he looks at where the leash is and he comes back around so that the leash doesn't get tangled around uh, the tree or the pole or whatever it is. This side. You're a good boy. He's really clever in that sense. Sometimes I can see his thought 
processes ticking over when I ask him to do something. And I'm so impressed at his ability to um, untangle himself from the leash. Oh, that's great. I'm getting video footage of him eating kangaroo poo. That's lovely. I guess the final thing I'll talk about on today's episode is um, prey drive and recall. Now, again, it's in my experience with Arlo because all dogs are different and they were brought up differently. Arlo is a purebred pedigree. He was bred for the uh, catwalk, <laughs> certainly not for hunting. Unlike my previous dog, Perry, who definitely had uh, hunting blood in him and his prey drive was extreme, he would never be able to come back once he'd started to chase uh, what he saw as prey, either um, kangaroos usually, sometimes cats. Actually, on one occasion, I stopped him from chasing a cat one occasion in the 13 and a half years that I had him. He may half-heartedly chase a kangaroo. He was sort of bound over across to them and then he very quickly circles back around and comes back across to where I am, which is exactly what I want and that's exactly what I've trained him to do. I've had um, kind of chats in the comment section on YouTube with some of my subscribers who also have um, Borzoi dogs and they tell me that their dog's prey drive is incredibly high and there's no way they'd be able to trust the dog off leash in an environment where I live, surrounded by kangaroos which I appreciate because that's exactly what Perry was like. But Arlo's not like that. So that's really great. So I guess in summary, when it comes to intelligence, obedience and recall and prey drive, in my experience, Arlo is intelligent he is somewhat obedient. He has moderate recall, but it's a lot better when he's motivated to receive something at the other end, like if it's around breakfast time. And his prey drive is low. I'll just clarify when I say his prey drive is low. Uh, that's with the kangaroos. Cats, he'll chase. If we came across a rabbit, he would chase it for sure. Um, he's not bothered by birds. He, he doesn't even pay any atten attention to them. What else have we come across? It's probably it, really. <laughs> so, as I said, that's in my experience. Every dog's different. Every owner's different. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you have any questions, then put them in the comments below and I'll see what I can do to answer them. Okay. Bye.